Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're building this media cabinet with fold out storage doors. Let's start this build with our material. I designed this to use all dimensional material that I found at the hardware store. I have seven planks of 140 by 12 mil at 2.4 meters long and four planks of 285 by 19 at 1.2 meters long. With all the wood organized, I can start cutting down the 140 mil pieces to create the back shelf. All the pieces are cut and now I can dry assemble everything to make sure it will fit which they do, so now I can start putting everything together and I highly recommend picking up some corner clamps as they are lifesavers when you need to perfectly fit a square corner. I pre-drilled, glued and screwed the joints for maximum strength. We can soon add the dividers which are mostly there to stop the shells from sagging and provide a little bit more strength. Now the back piece is done and ready to stand up. The doors are up next and I lay the pieces on the cabinet to make sure they are correct size. Then I can do the same thing as the back shelf by gluing and screwing. Now we have a board that looks like a banana. A few screws will fix that one up, but you just got to be very careful when doing it. Alright, so we're up to position the doors now, and what we've done is we've actually clamped this top piece onto the back uh, the frame here, which is where it's going to be screwed onto anyway. But um, now what we need to do is just level up these doors, because these end pieces here aren't actually screwed in yet. And I know there's going to be a little bit of overhang, so now we need to level them up, put the correct gap in here and then we'll uh, line up where we have to have the overhang. Not line and screw them together then the doors should be done and well, the frames of the doors should be done, we just add the shells. And then after that the doors will be completely done and we'll work on this top bit where the consoles will sit. Pretty pretty good progress so far, let's keep going. I'm using a few icy pole sticks to place a gap in the middle of the doors so they have room to open. The doors had to be a few millimetres shorter than the back shelf, so I measured them as I was building, then cut off the excess with a saw. So the doors are all made and put together where the outer frames are. Now all we need to do is make the shelves for the inside like uh, what these ones are but obviously to fit inside the doors. Now the reason they're still clamped up is because there's a little bit of twist in that in the boards which you will get with wood. So they're clamped up like a measure, cut and attach while it's all in the clamps that way it should stay perfectly square. So I measured and cut the inner shelves for the doors and attached them the exact same way I did with the other joints. Moving back to the back shelf, I'm cutting a sheet of 3mm MDF with a laminate face to use as a back plate. I used glue and nails to hold this onto the shelf, but looking back, the glue only barely just held on and you can pull it off if you really try, so don't use PVA glue. Next up is the bottom piece and because it's already 1.2 meters long, there's no need to cut it down, so we can just glue and screw it on. Thank you. 
Now we have a top piece to work on and I cut all the pieces and then attach them the exact same way as I did everything before. This top piece is holding all the PlayStation consoles so every divider is measured at a very specific size. Tops on and it's looking bloody tops, so back to the doors. And I'm cutting the back plate and this time I'm using a regular old wood saw to prove that you don't need a band saw like I used before. And I use the same non-recommended method as before for attaching the pieces on. Now normal MDF looks very boring so I wanted to put a pattern on the front but I needed to use a primer first. So we got the doors fully assembled and I've also chucked a primer on here and also while this was drying it looks like uh, one of the cats decided to have a little inspection of it but um, at least it was a primer coat so it's okay but alright so now we're going to do the uh, pattern design on the front. I opted for a brick type design, so after drawing the pattern I used a light cream colour for the grout lines. And after that dried, I taped over them, protect it from the next layer of paint. which is a dark red to act as the bricks. And after two coats of that, it's finally time for a satisfying tape peel. I cut these corner pieces to make the edges look nice and also to cover up the gap we made in the middle. Time to attach the doors and I marked out the hinges on the back shelf then place a screw or two to hold it on. And then place a few matchsticks under the door to lift it from the base a little bit. Then attach the hinges to the door to give it a first test swing. And they both work, so after a quick sand, we are done. So that's the end of the video, that's how we made this cabinet for under 200 Australian dollars or 150 dollars if you live in America. So if you like what you saw, you can actually click this, this little button up here and that's going to keep you informed of everything else I post in the future. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.